and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. <clears throat> How's it going? <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Thanks for becoming a member. Now you have some emotes. Uh, hi, Aisha. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Sue. Hi, Christina. Hi, Hannah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How's it going? Hi, Eliza. Hi, Tiffany. How's it going? Good to see you guys. I've been looking forward to this, but I have to admit, like, there's so many options. I'm like, okay, focus, Jeremy. I really want this to be a nice, smooth tutorial. And originally, I posted about it being uh, using the Donny by Friday Pattern Company, which you can totally still use. But I realized I've never sewn the Donny on my channel, and I figure that it's probably wise for me to sew it first. Um, so that you have some sort of sewing reference. And Hearts has agreed to uh, sponsor us a Donny project, so I'll probably do that soon. Um, but you can use any kind of camp shirt, and I'm gonna go over that in a second, so. Hmm. Hi, Kim. Hi, Amy. <clears throat> My throat feels very um, not warmed up. <laughs> This is the camp shirt I made the other day so I could use my new buttonhole attachment. And it's really funny. Um, I used the exact same block or pattern that I drafted that I'm wearing here. And this fabric could not fit me any more different. In fact, today, maybe today, I don't know if I'll get to it today. I'm gonna try to, cause I'd like to wear it tomorrow, but I'm going to bring in the shoulders and the sides a little bit and put a different sleeve on it because it's too, it's hanging off too much. This one, you know, it does hang off a little bit, but um, it works. The eyelet is so much more stable than a linen. It's just such, such proof that, you know, you just never know what's gonna happen in a fabric. But I can, it's wear, totally wearable, but I just don't like where the sleeve is sitting. So I'm gonna move it. And, um, cause I have too much cap for a drop shoulder. You know what I mean? I say hi to you, Julie. Hello, hello. All right, so let me go over a little bit of what you can use, because you can use whatever you want. I try and make this so that it doesn't matter what pattern you're starting from, you can make what I'm making but with the pattern you have, right? There's a lot of different color styles, and um, I'll show this image in a second. So. If you're using a button front camp shirt like this, right? There's no collar stand. It's just a collar, camp collar, convertible collar, whatever you want to call it. A button placket that has a facing, right? There's no, it's not a sewn on placket, which is fine, but I'm not going to tell, I'm not dealing with how to deal with a button, like a separate placket. And it's not because I don't think you can do that. It's just that I have to narrow this down a little bit. So, um, and 
if you want tips, I'll give you tips. You just need to tell me because I'm not going to go over every option unless someone says that's the option I'm doing, right? So I'm going to try and give you um, a nice focus tutorial. So with this one here, right, it has a straight up and down placket. You can button this all the way up, right? You can also leave it unbuttoned and it's still a wearable shirt. That is what a convertible collar is. It can be buttoned up. It can be left unbuttoned. Unlike say the Donnie, I've never made the Donnie and I don't have, I don't own the pattern, <laughs> um, but someone sent me a screenshot of their pattern pieces. So the Donnie, I should show you a picture of this maybe. Oh, I hate how my mouse doesn't want to move on paper very good. All right. All right, so let me share my screen. You're gonna, I'm gonna, you're gonna lose me. Look, you get Trixie in the <laughs> face cam. <laughs> All right, so, and let me move the chat window so I can see what you guys are talking about. All right, so here, see how the Donnie, the Donnie is a pullover. My community absolutely is bonkers for this shirt. They even have a Donnie of the month hashtag. They love it. They've hacked it and, and they're having so much fun with it. So it's a pullover, but it's also a notched collar, which means it has a collar somewhat similar to like a blazer, right? So can we zoom in on these pictures, I wonder? So I'm trying to get a good picture of the notched collar without hair in front of it. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> it's actually kind of wide too. So do you see how over on this side, you can see that seam where the collar is attached to the neckline? In a way, it's very similar how the collar of the camp collar here in front of me looks when you let it splay open like that. But the thing about a notched collar is that is that do you see right here it swoops out past the center front right here see that so if you were to draw a straight line going up there would be this extra sticking out so um, that is the built-in facing right there of the color so all right so that's the Donnie so that's a notched collar and you would most likely just keep your center front seam. So the things I'm gonna tell you to do are basically just how to figure out how to make a dress from pretty much any shirt. You don't have to make a pullover, by the way. Pullover was just a fun idea because inspired by the Donnie. Um, but there's a ton of other camp shirts out there. And if you were part of the um, camp shirt sew along last summer, People made all sorts of uh, camp shirts. Is it a drop sleeve? What is what a drop sleeve? You, you can use a drop sleeve, that doesn't matter. So in this dress tutorial, basically, I'm gonna be showing you, like all of this is gonna stay the same. Whatever you have going on up here, you can just sew exactly like you've been using the instructions that your pattern came with. The, um, and if you want it buttoned all the way to the hem, you can do that. I'm basically gonna be showing you how to find the right length, the right fullness around your waist and your hip, and also show you how to make a draw cord, a built-in draw cord, so you can kind of cinch it in and still get that kind of slouchy camp shirt look. So the fitting is minimal with this, which is really nice, and you store, sort of stick with the same vibe of a camp shirt, because the camp shirt is sort of um, more of a, a relaxed fit. You know, it's not <clears throat> the same as like a button-up shirt, right? A button-up shirt, <clears throat> excuse me, is a little more fitted and tailored, right? It does have a drop um, armhole, but it's it's minimal, right? So, hi Sydney, how's it going? It's not supposed to be there. Is says, oh, okay, I should. Oh, is that what you're asking? Okay, yeah, um, yeah. I've noticed that too. The sleeve fits the in that in those photos. I don't think are the best of that size. Some of them are okay, some of them are not. I noticed that too. Um, it looks too big for her, to be honest. But you can go that route, right? You can go kind of a big slouchy camp shirt. Going peachy, it was just Friday. <laughs> well, it's good. I mean, at least it's going peachy, even though it's not Friday. 
um, so um, your camp shirt, like this one here, I put gathers on the back right here. Yours may have tucks or a center tuck. That's fine, you know, whatever. You, can, you might have nothing. Doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to basically focus on this lower portion here. So how to find your waist, how to add enough ease. You probably won't have to add anything if your camp shirt is already kind of a slouchy look. So we're going for that kind of, um, <clears throat> I'm so sorry, my voice is kind of uh, cold. So here are some color options. Um, the center one, notched collar, that's the Donnie right there. Mine's a little less stylized than theirs, but you can see I even drew in their sewn facing that they have. Um, that's, they sewed the facing to the garment. You don't always do that, but in that case, that's probably really key to helping that lay nicely. So the far left on the collar, center front seam, no placket. That's what I have on my dress form right now, except it doesn't have a center front seam, right? <laughs> Your voice is never cold. Um, so I want you to look at the difference between the far left one, the collar center fret seam, no placket, and the far right one, the slit and facing. So do you see how, um, I'm gonna just enlarge this a little bit. It's kind of hard to enlarge it actually. Do you see how the far right one, you can see the neck seam a little bit right there, right? And on the far left one, that's missing. So that's the primary difference between those two is that. And then the, the one on the left has a center front seam and the one on the right is on the fold. So both are possible in both situations. You can do both. All right, and then on the bottom row on the left, you have a placket. And that's what I'm wearing right now. I just don't have buttons and buttonholes because the placket was shallow enough that I didn't need to put buttons and buttonholes. I just left it sort of open kind of like the one on the bottom right, but that one is, is purposefully splayed open, like you cannot connect the top. And that's a Johnny Collar. That's what those are called. So if you were to search Johnny Collar, that's what you'd get. Why can't I, there we go. Let me try, eh. I don't know what I just moved. There's, there's a lot of layers in my, my streaming thing here. I'm just trying to get this back on the screen here all the way, all right. So these are just, a, these are like the most of the options um, for, you know, collar and neckline, you know, stuff. If you were going traditional camp shirt, I would say the slit and the facing look the most like a, a camp collar shirt. Whereas the others, not so much. Maybe the one with the placket, because the placket, it's just that the placket is a separate piece, right? So I'm going to do this tutorial based on you using a, the, like the, a shirt like the Donnie that is already on the fold, right? It already is a pullover, so you can do a pullover version, or one like the one in front of me here on the table which is just a traditional camp shirt, right? See, so mine has a facing with Hong Kong finish. I should have put some um, examples of the Hong Kong finish on some garments. Can you see it? <laughs> In that one video I just did, kind of a big faux pas on my part. But you know, that means I don't have to change the fit of any of these things. Do I want this to be a button front all the way down or do I want it to be pullover? Those are the things you have to decide. All right, so let's get to what you need to do this tutorial. And I'm gonna, and so let me show you also <clears throat> the shirt or the dress. See how it has a little casing? That's what I plan on doing. If you want darts, I'll just show you at what point. You're going to have to try it on. You're gonna have to probably pin out your own darts. Um, unless you have a fitted camp shirt and you want to use that and then you're just going to you're, you're I would definitely recommend muslining and and checking the fit because anytime you're going more fitted You should just check it. Don't ruin your fabric um, By taking a, a risk if you're trying to get perfection on your very first try 
um, be really, really careful. So <laughs> like even I made, I, I, I made a quick muslin to see if I just, you know, make my dress and put it on my dress form or make my camp shirt, put it on the dress form. You can see at the top here, I just put my center front on the fold. And then look, I did that far left version where see how the, the placket's going all the way up into the neckline here. So it doesn't have a separate placket. It doesn't have a placket like a Johnny collar. It has more of a slit. So you would do a facing, but this could also have a seam here either way. Um, and it doesn't have any of the neckline showing right here, right? So I feel like this is kind of the vi vibe I'm going for. I'm kind of going for that hybrid tennis dress, a uh, camp dress, something kind of relaxed and loose and easy to wear um, and easy to fit as well. And then, and then I just put a piece of twill tape <laughs> over it. But this, I also think in my, I'm bigger than the dress form. It doesn't look like it, but I am bigger than this dress form. And it's just cause there's no arms. See, there's, you can see if there's an arm in here, she would look really different. And then this is, I took out the gathers of the shirt on the table. I just put it flat just to see what would happen. Okay. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> look how deep that armhole is. But see, this is what I'm wearing right now. This is literally the exact shirt I'm wearing right now. I'm wearing my Kosecha pants. <laughs> so I think this one has gathers on the back and I just got rid of them for the, the muslin. And then I didn't even sew the collar. It's just one layer of fabric. I just wanted to see where am I at, right? All right, so <clears throat> the things you need for this, you're going to need, I have a, a short list of measurements. Hi, Malin. Oh, did your time change? Oh, our time changed. Yours hasn't yet. <laughs> all right, so do you guys all know what high point at shoulder means? It's also referred to in a lot of drafting books as HPS. And the high point of the shoulder is right here. So do you see how when this shirt is laying flat, Right, I don't have it like laying flat perfectly, but here I'll let, line it up here. All right, so you see my, it's sewn, right? So my armholes are lined up. And when this is laying flat, here is the shoulder seam, but that is not the crest of the shoulder, right? The crest of the shoulder is right here. So this is your high point of shoulder. And um, this is a really key measurement in a lot of drafting because it's one of the zero zero points I talk about where, where the garment has to fall from, like it's hanging from here, is immovable. You cannot in any circumstance change on a person where that point is, right? The only thing you can change about it is where you measure it from along the angle, like how close you are to the neck to how far out, right? So. When I say high point shoulder HPS, it usually means right here at the neck and you go straight down. And so we want this measurement from you. You just do your best. It's okay if you're not perfect, but you're just gonna put your tape measure right here. I'll put it on the full screen. <clears throat> Cause it's never easy. And sometimes what I find, it's never easy to measure yourself. I stand in front of the mirror. I put this right here and I put it right here up against my neck and I don't go past your collar seam if you're wearing a collared shirt because that's a good gauge of where your shirt will sit, right? So you just go, where's my tape measure? Go straight down. You're gonna want a measurement that's at your waist where you would wear this draw string, this draw cord, this casing. <laughs> you want one at the waist, um, um, at the full hip, and then at the hem. So that's why I just stand in front of the mirror and I kind of go, okay, this is about where I want this. This is where, this is where I think my full hip is. And then I look in the mirror to see where I kind of roughly want the hem of my dress, okay? These don't have to be super precise because we're also gonna add a little like blousing in here. Like we're, gonna, we're going to account for that. All right, and so <clears throat> those are the three high point at shoulder. And then the other high point I want is, I want one from your outer shoulder, I'm stepping on it. And then I want you to, if you want pockets, I want you to pretend like you're about to put your hand in your pocket. 
So not with your hand in your pocket, because that's not accurate. You want where you naturally feel the urge to put your hand in your pocket, right? And then I look at that measurement right above the top of my hand right there. I want you to write that one down. So that's four measurements so far. High point shoulder to your waist, your hip, your hem length of your dress. And then from your high point at your shoulder at the outer shoulder to where you would put your hand in your pocket. And your hip measurement. If your waist is larger than your hip, then you want your waist measurement, all right? So we just need a, a basic circumference to sort of kind of be our guiding light. Because if your camp shirt fits you right now and you really like it, you, you shouldn't have to worry too much about a circumference measurement. If you have some fit issues with your camp shirt, they will not magically go away with a dress. However, some of them may be more comfortable and masked by a draw cord waist. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, um, like especially for people who have the, the sway back or a hip tilt issue, um, that always helps when we can cinch things, things in and kind of seat them back there. It helps, but it doesn't mean it makes the fit issue go away. It also could mean that maybe you hike the dress up higher in the back um, or you have more blousing in the back. So it just feels more comfortable is all. You're not certain what you want it to look like. I mean, what, I, like, what are you considering changing? Because in my eyes, you don't have to change anything about the top. You can just make it longer and add your pockets and your draw cord. The skirt. I'm doing an all-in-one, so if you want a waist seam, I'm not doing a waist seam, just so you guys know. That adds a lot, a huge layer to the testing. So we're basically making a sheath. Shirt hem be loose to start with. Hi, Lean. The shirt hem be loose to start with. Uh, do you mean should the fit of your um, camp shirt be a loose fit? Yeah, you're. This is why we're starting with the camp shirt because it typically has a little bit more ease. It's a little bit more relaxed. Um, it's not as tailored, you know. Oh, and I should mention there in the description there is, I think, links to two tutorials. One from last summer when I show you how to draft a camp shirt from your favorite button-up shirt. And then the next day I showed how I made my camp shirt into a pullover, the one I'm wearing right now, the pullover with the placket. So towards the very, I, so I, yeah, but Eliza, are you asking me, is the, is this what you're asking me? Does my camp shirt that I'm starting with need to be loose at the hem? Is that what you're asking me? I'm good through the waist casing, but I don't know if I want a straight skirt, A-line, long, short tunic. Oh, goodness, you guys are really adding a lot. <laughs> I mean, it, you could do those things. I'm not showing an A-line today. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I think you should definitely have a looser fit down there. If you don't, that hip measurement that um, that I said in the like just a minute ago, of all the measurements you need, that's going to be helpful. So I would look at your put your camp shirt on, right? Put it on, and um, what I like to do. This is kind of like a reality check for me. Because it's really, ease is kind of hard to assume what you think you need. So when I look at this, you know, it just kind of, it skims, but it's a little bit loose, right? Definitely not like going in. It's just a little cropped shirt, right? Just something really easy. But if I were to pinch it in on the sides, not hard, but just kind of loose, and assuming I'm pinching it equally on both sides, and then I look at this amount, that I'm almost pinching a two, oh, let's see, two full inches, right? So that's four inches on each side. That's eight inches total in ease. <laughs> exactly. 
the skirt will hang down, but you're going to have your draw cord to cinch it in and give you some shape and blousing. <clears throat> and I'm going to go out a little bit on the hips. You might need to go out more. Yes, exactly, Eliza. Hi, Monica. How's it going? Donnie dress of the month. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. New hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> telling you guys they're, they're obsessed with this that Donnie <laughs> all right um <laughs> okay Monica we won't tell we never tell what happens at so so live stream stays here uh you can also put a vent maybe at the bottom of your dress if you want maybe you could do a shirt tail hem kind of a la Cali shirt dress Right? You could use the Cali shirt dress. <laughs> then you wouldn't have to make this at all. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna give you a really quick tutorial on making this a, uh, if you have a button front and you want it to be a pullover, I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial on that, but I go into it better in the live stream that I link in the description. No, I'm using a camp shirt lean. Just like I said, I'm using an existing camp shirt pattern that I, I try not to draft from scratch since not everybody has a block. I'm trying to give you guys some drafting um, tutorials with a, any kind of version of the shirt I'm starting with so that there's a lot, because not everybody has the same patterns, right? All right, so this is the shirt I'm wearing. This is this pattern right here, all right? Do you want me to tone down the brightness a little bit? Let's, let's do that. Oops, I almost said record. Uh, let's just tone down the brightness a little bit. Okay. Does that work? That works. Okay. All right, so this is my, the shirt I'm wearing right now. It has a yoke and it's taped to my back here. And do you see this extension right here? This is the amount I added to give myself the gathers across the back here. That's all I did. That right there, right? So that's what that is. So if I line up my yoke starting from the armhole to here, that is my center back, okay? That's how I know that. Here is my front, and this is a pullover version here. You can see that there is a little notch cut out right here at the base. It's a little, it got nicked and cutting. This is just extra paper right here. Which pattern? I thought you guys already owned this, the Donnie. <laughs> All right, so you can see it sticks out a little bit right there. So this is the pullover version. But let's say uh, I got a couple of patterns here. Here, I pulled out the, the only pattern I have that has a notched collar that I bought is the Closet Core Carolyn Pajama. <laughs> which actually fits me really good. And I would totally use it as a little shirt block. You could use this as well. Oh, the named clothing Rita. Oh, I have that, yeah. Yeah, actually this is kind of similar to the, what we're drafting is sort of similar to the Rita because it has the draw cord in the front. It's pretty high-waisted, I will say. Um, yeah. I'm trying to remember the details of that. I made that so long ago and I made that on, on stream. All right, so where is a pen? This is my only copy of this. I'm gonna be careful. So do you see <clears throat> the center front here? So whatever pattern you're using, if it has a button front, the center front, which is right here, right? The center of the body is usually where your buttonholes are marked on the pattern or they will mark it center front right that's what this says right here center front and that right there is going to be the fold line all right so let's see I'm gonna see if I can connect these
It really starts going out down low here. All right, oops, look at that. It made a line on the through the tissue. Never underestimate a Sharpie. Oh, but I don't wanna use my paper that I have sitting here on the table. Let me get a scrap here. I thought I had a scrap here, but I guess I don't. Let me just grab one really quick. I can't remember, I didn't make this one a pullover ever, right? Oh man, I don't have my big scissors here with me. Sorry, I'm sure it's loud. Whew, there we go. All right. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> but I, I will get to soon. Sarah has me. Wow, a little bit of peer pressure happened in there. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to transfer the center front here. You see this little notch right here? On, on something like a notched collar, you will sometimes see this little notch. Oh wait, I need a center front too. Oh, it, that just moved, but I'm not trying to be really precise right now. You want to be precise, but I don't need to be. We're just trying to do a quick tutorial. I'm making it a pullover. So here's my center front. Right, and here is that swings out. Here's the shoulder. All right, that's the center front. Center front, center back, always the fold, right? <laughs> Donnie Confessions. Yeah, that's, that's so cute, Malin, I love that. All right, so um, the thing we need with our center front, right, here's our center front. So if you wanted this on the fold, right, no center seam, that, that can work, but you have to remember that um, you're going to have to leave enough to get your dress over your head, all right? so. I think that you're pretty safe with a neck opening in the 26 inch range. Most adult heads aren't going to be much over 22 inches and you're not looking for a really tight fit, right? You, you know, maybe have your glasses on, your hair in a bun or whatever. Um, you can, you can do a really, you know, choked up um, pullover. My, this is a pretty shallow opening right here, but that I wouldn't go much more, much higher than this. I also wouldn't go much lower because I don't want buttons and buttonholes on this one I'm wearing. So I don't wanna to go too deep because then I would be exposing myself, right? So you have to figure that out for you, right? All right, so let's draw in the seam line here. There's the seam line. So it, I would, Safely guess if you have if you're using a camp style collar or something like that something that has a collar Let's just put it that way Right up here at your neck. This is probably close to your neck, right? So we're gonna assume that and that we're just gonna pretend like that's right here is the front of your neck right here We can't really rely on where this hits. This could be down here. This could be up there That's all this little this is that little um, notch that folds back, right? So if you want to sort of get a rough estimate of where the neck is, we'll just kind of extend this down. And I would go at least four inches down, maybe five, something like that. And that right there is going to be at least the depth that you want. And since we're still in this little notched collar area here, let's go below it down like here. Just so we don't have to disrupt the sewing of this right here, right? 
And so now this is our seam allowance, this is our center. This is, we need to get all the way over here. So we want to bring this, if we want this on the fold, let me do a different color ink now. If we want this on the fold, we need to kind of bring this all the way over to here, right, and blend it in. We can't do this on the fold, I'm sorry. <laughs> Whoa. On a notch collar, you're not gonna be able to do it on the fold. You have to have a seam. I don't know what I was thinking. So we're gonna go to the seam line right here. No, 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 we'll go here and we'll add seam allowance to this. Okay, wait. So we're gonna now ignore this cut line. We're gonna ignore the seam allowance to that cut line. The seam allowance goes to the cut line, right? This has seam allowance on it. We're gonna add seam allowance to our center front. Right? So this is our new cut line. And we'll blend this in. And this is our new cut line. And then this would be so that you sew this together in the center front. It's a pullover, but it's not on the fold. You can't do a fold when it extends past. I have so many tutorials in my mind, I'm getting them confused. So, so this would be where we're at. And then you can use all your same pattern pieces here. Just maybe you're facing, you're gonna probably cut it to here, right? And then your facing goes like that. <laughs> All right, so if you have a notched collar, this would be your new cut line. You're gonna find your center front, you're gonna add seam allowance, you're gonna blend it to your collar. That's the three steps, all right? Hi, hey, Catherine. All right, so now let's say I really just used that whole piece of paper for that. Let's say we have a Let's say we have a, a a button front with a facing, like a traditional camp collar, right? Here's my center front. Here's my extension. So on the pattern, if you if they don't say what the center front is, usually there's a notch right here. Wherever your collar sews to, that's your center front. If there's buttonholes on there, like they're marked right here, and you just see the buttonholes, right? You just see those buttonholes, there's no line there. That's your center front, all right? So you need to mark that on there. So this is my center front. And then basically we just discard everything over there, right? So ignore this. Now we're focused on our center front here and this can be on the fold. And then if you want to do, say you want to do the, the placket like this, I'll give you a quick rundown. Come on mouse. The far right slit and facing Right? That slit and facing right there. <clears throat> so look at the, la the you know, uh, the right hand if you're wearing it. Um, the collar comes to right here. We back the collar off to about right here. And we leave this little collar front coming down. But when we put this on the fold, we're going to lose a little bit across here because when we sew the slit placket, we have to have seam allowance, right? So if we sewed seam allowance to this, it's basically like at an angle. So if the pattern piece is like this and we have a slit like that, right? That's what it looks like. When you sew that, here's your seam. Like that. So you see how it goes at an angle to the base there? That is what would give you that camp, the, um, this one here. That's what it would look like. And then you can just back your camp, your collar, 
off, right? Usually a collar goes right here at the center. You could do that, that's fine, right? It could go to here, right? It could go back here. That's how I have it drawn. I have it kind of back off, kind of Johnny style, all right? So there, you can really get go down the rabbit hole of options for your neckline and your collar. But those are our basic things for doing it. Pullover style, no, that's, that's scrap fabric, paper, paper. All right, let me move these pattern pieces out of the way. So let's talk about your dress and we'll start doing that. So essentially this, I have a lot going on here. Let me move you out over there and you guys over here so I don't confuse anything. <laughs> So this tutorial today is assuming you already have your camp shirt. You really like the way all of this is going, your collar, your neckline, right? And if you want a button front, you can keep it a button front. If you want to make it a pullover, then you need to make it a pullover and then you can continue on with the dress. You can use all of your other pattern pieces just the same. If you're, you know, changing your front to a pullover, you're going to have to do something here with the facing, right? And um, you just need a shorter facing. If it's got one, you don't need the full length anymore because there's no open placket. Yeah, you could do a big 70s collar. Totally. I feel like the Donnie has that kind of 70s vibe. It's got a very like open, I can't remember what this term is when it's really like splayed and when this, this collar is very deep. <laughs> All right, so what I'm doing, I'm going to be doing basically this one here. I'm hiding all the others so you know, oops. But you know, I didn't, but you didn't know I could do that. <laughs> this one here. Can I please have the, thank you. That is the one I'm doing right here. The getting that little uh, dialogue to do that. So this is what I'm doing on mine, I think. I, I like the kind of hybrid Johnny thing happening. Um, I am considering the center front seam because if I, if I think I might make this with my ruler fabric that you guys know I've been kind of holding on to right here. So I have this really great ruler fabric. It's in a rainbow of colors, right? And I would really like a dress where the um, rulers are on the bias, right? So it would look like this at the center front, actually like this. Like this. This is what I want. I want the angle down. So this would be my center front seam. That's what I'm wanting and I think that um, that's what I would do with this pattern. That's why I'm wanting the seam because I can't put it on the fold and get this effect, right? So I think that's the one I'm going to go with and then this will also sort of honor the Donnie sort of center seam but still pullover vibe. And then I can show you how to sew the facing on there um, if you're changing over. So the whole thing, there's no waist seam on this pattern. I know it looks like I'm putting a waist seam on here, but I'm not. It's going to be all one piece. You could cut it apart at the casing if you want. It's a save fabric though. And that would actually be a really smart idea in my case. The fit will change a little bit, but because it's loose, it's not going to be a big deal. And this is why I kind of stalled out on this project is because I was store originally going with something like um, a really fitted button up front with, with darts and things. And then I was like, oh, I don't want darts. I want princess seams. And then I was like, no, I don't want to deal with princess seams and the bias rulers trying to match it. And so um, that's why I think this is a much better option. I'm not going to get exactly what I had originally envisioned. And I could still, if I wanted to go maybe the dart route, 
but I sort of don't. I sort of want something a lot easier to wear, something with I can wear with like tennis shoes and um, be comfortable and cute and kind of um, still has got that sewing meta vibe, so. Can you lay a pattern on top of a dolman sleeve top and make set in sleeves? I can, I can interpret that question probably three different ways, Julie. So I don't want to say yes or no, because I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. But if you're asking if you can make a dolman top, sleeve top into one with set in sleeves, yes, you can. And there's a quick tutorial in the sleeve skill building session that you have access to. It's at the end of it. But you could also, if you're using a dolman top, you could keep it that way. You don't need to change anything about your sleeve. You don't need to change anything about your sleeve, your darts, nothing with this camp dress. All right, all right. So I'm gonna trace off my, my pullover here. I <laughs> have so many like materials here. This is what, oh, that's right. This is what I was gonna use for my pullover tutorial. I'm such a silly goose sometimes. I'd spend, I spend so long sometimes preparing and then I forgot that I prepared. <laughs> All right, so this is my little pullover camp shirt, just like the one I'm wearing. This is the one I'm wearing, by the way. I'm trying to slide the paper down so you can see it, so you can kind of see what I'm drafting. All right, so I'm gonna, um, All right, and so um, just so we're really, really clear, never draft with Sharpies, all right? I know you see me drafting with Sharpies. Don't draft with Sharpies. They're super inaccurate. I can't underscore that enough. You should draft with a, pe a sharp pencil. I just had this discussion with a pattern drafter yesterday and um, I know you guys probably still use a Sharpie, but don't. I'm only doing it so you can see it on camera, okay? Oh, really? <laughs> I've learned that I'd say a lot of antiquated things and then throw away your Sharpies if they're not good anymore. I have plenty where that came from. I mean, when the Sharpie's new, it's sharp, but that does not last very long. <laughs> All right, so let's give ourselves a nice, long, um, straight line. And then get my longer ruler out. Using a short ruler for a really long straight line isn't also the most accurate thing to do. I had to move my little water cooler in here and I don't like hearing it. <laughs> it bugs me. I think it's just change, you know, new noise. All right, go to the other side. All right, so I'm gonna trace off my top here. So make sure that you, I, you know, I'm going to trace off this lower portion maybe in a, no, I'll just trace it all in Sharpie. I don't mind if mine's messy. I want you to be able to see. Here's a, my vent. It's my dart. I raised my armhole and brought in my shoulder compared to the one I'm wearing. Here's my pocket right here. Here's my vanishing point. Actually, I can't do that, let's see. Um, I need, I wish I had an awl over here sometimes. I, I lowered my um, vanishing point. All right, and so here's the current length of my, all right, here we go. I wrote myself a note here. Neck lowered half inch, didn't change collar placket pieces. Good to know, Sammy. 
Good to know. All right, so I'm gonna mark my vanishing point. So here is my pocket, and I'm gonna draw a line between these two so I don't confuse them. Pocket, this is my dart. I'll draw it in for you guys. Oh my gosh. This is why I don't use, ugh, anyway. <laughs> Game the wait, what? Oh, Monica, sorry. That's great, Aisha, I like that, yeah. Want us to call the boss and say there's an emergency. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, Monica. Do you want us to bail you out? <laughs> I need to move this out of the way. Why won't it let me grab it now? There we go. I'm gonna move this over here. I think I can transform this. Let's see. Hmm. Can't I crop it? Oh yeah, I can. It's too cumbersome. We'll just hide it for now. All right. Is that bright enough for you guys? All right, so we're gonna uh, draw in our seam allowance at our neck. Mine has quarter inch at the neck, half inch at the shoulder. And now I'm gonna show you a trick on finding your high point of shoulder on your pattern. All right, so I'm gonna close my dart just so it's out of the way, all right? I have a side bust dart, you might not, that's okay. So it's actually got to go like this. Since I changed the vanishing point, I never refolded it. All right, so we'll do that for now. I need to reshape it too. Okay, so now if you have a yoke, uh, you don't ha you should tape your, yeah, tape your yoke to the back, right? Hi Donna, how's it going? That's what Malin said. All right, and now I want you to lay your back onto your front, like on the seam line. So see how I have a half inch seam allowance on this shoulder? Right, so I'm gonna draw a one inch parallel line and that will take up each of the half inch on the front and the back. So we're gonna line these up. If you have thin enough paper, you can just, you can pin these together. I'm using a removable tape. My life revolves around <laughs> removable tape. All right, and so now we're gonna line these up along the underarm here, like that, all right? Line it up along the underarm. And now I want you to get your centers parallel. If you, if you didn't fold the dart, it might be weird. All right, so as long as I'm getting these centers roughly parallel, right? Now we kind of know where the high point of the shoulder is. So see how much it's, it's above the shoulder seam. So let me give you a little bit more context. You'll only have to do this once, and then once we mark it on here, we'll um, get it. All right, so this looks like the seam is really far forward, but remember there's a half inch seam line. So this is actually the seam line right here, this black, this darker black upper line. That's the actual seam line. So when I lay this here, like this, right? I have my, my shirt is sewn, it's all relaxed, right? Here is my shoulder seam right here, right? That's what we're looking at there, this line right here. 
All right, and let me get this a little flatter here. It's a little fiddly, it's okay. We don't need anything super precise, but what we really need, because for some of you, this seam will be right here. It'll be right here at the top. For some of you, it might be on the back because some weird pattern companies do that and I don't know why. <laughs> um, I really like seeing my shoulder seam when you look at someone. I like to see the shoulder seam. I also feel like it seats better on the shoulders when the seam is slightly forward because sometimes you're trying to combat the shirt from tilting back, right? And that could be because you have rounded back issues or the shirt was drafted too flat for you, right? So um, for me, I really like the seam a little forward. It, the seam can be anywhere you want. But this is just to point out that when you guys do this, you're probably gonna be shocked at how different yours is from mine. So I couldn't just measure my, when we did all those measurements, high point of shoulder down to our waist, our hip and our hem, I couldn't do that from my shoulder seam because that may be, I couldn't do that from my neck and then, and then measure from my shoulder seam on the paper, right? It would be wrong. And you might not have the shirt sewn, right? You maybe you've never made your camp shirt. I hope you've made it at least a few times so that you know how it fits. Um, or maybe um, there just, there's just a lot of reasons. And so you really need to know what, you know, an apples to apples comparison. So what we're trying to do is put our body into this pattern right here and know exactly where it's going to hit on us in real life. So this, if I measured from the seam down, I would be shorting myself. This, that would change my waist position drastically. It would put it way too high. Um, so we definitely don't want to do that. So now let's measure on here and we'll mark the couple that we can mark. So I know that my waist is here and my hip, let's see if, it, if it's going to make it on here. My hip is on here. My high hip, my full hip is right there. All right. So that's all you want to do with that. Okay, and then let's do it to the back as well. So we're going to, I'm just gonna put a little mark on the back there. All right, and so now I know that this is my hip and this is my waist. Apples to apples, apples to apples, <laughs> okay? That's what we're going for. So now I'm gonna take this apart. You could do this before you trace it, so you don't have to then lay this back on there. Oh, I have really old removable tape on here. If it sits there for a year, then yeah, it might rip your paper, but for the most part it won't. All right, let's take off. All right, so now, I'm gonna transfer those marks. To my pattern here. Like that. All for that. I have five <laughs> rulers. <laughs> They're all in the way. <laughs> Let's get rid of some of these. We just need two. All right, and now I'm gonna square across. So this is my waist. It's my waist. Now, if you want a lot of blousing on your shirt, so what I would do is kind of give yourself an idea of what kind of blousing you want. So, cause I'm not putting a waist seam in here, but you can if you want. But let's say that um, I have my draw cord in here, right? I should put, sometimes I wish I had an Elgato over here. Okay, so if I put my draw cord on here, or maybe I can show you on here, on her. See, now this is, this is fine if she is a doll, right? She's walking around and she never raises her arms or picks up lint off the floor. But the soon, you know, the second she raises her arms, right, she's gonna pull her um, 
dress up and it's gonna be really uncomfortable. So we really need a little bit of blousing to give us some movement, right? You can do a little, you can do a lot. Right. I like, I like very little because I don't like it to be too bulky and even a little is going to be a lot more comfortable. Plus it's just more realistic. If you don't mind the dress moving with you completely, then you don't have to put blousing in there, but you're probably going to want a little blousing. So you're going to kind of see what you need and I would, you could do it on yourself, right? Like if I'm sitting here and I raise my, which, which arm is that? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to tell. Right? And I get that little bit of blousing that happens. You can pinch that amount or just sort of even kind of look at it and go, okay, how much do I want? Usually it's going to be roughly an inch and a half or more for kind of a baseline for your blousing. So you can add an inch and a half to that, that waistline for the blousing, or you can add a little bit more, but that's what we're going for here. So if I look at this massive amount here, that right there is two and a quarter, right? So. All right, so now we're going to build in our blousing, right? So I'll put in one and three quarters. We'll kind of split the difference. So this is the blousing. Sorry, you can't really see that very well. And now when you measure anything from your high point of shoulder down, you need to subtract this out because it's not factored into the overall length. So. Think of it as like a pleat right now that's closed anytime you do your measuring from your high point of shoulder down. All right, so now we'll add our, add this, we'll move our hip, mark the same amount. So this is our new hip. This is our waist. And this is our waist and this is our waist, right? Because this is a pleat. So when these come together, this is our waist, all right? Do you want me to zoom in a little? All right, so let's get an idea of our overall length. I'm looking at my measurement. So you can do this. You can put your uh, ruler or your tape measure up to this point, pick it up, drag it down if you don't want to have to do any math. So mine is, I might be off, oh no, I'm not. This is, this is my, measurement here. Um, I'm going to give myself another three inches right here. Just some wiggle room. I probably already built in wiggle room when I got that measurement too. So I'll probably double check that right before I cut this out when it, everything's sort of refined and we're there. All right. So now we've got the basic positioning of our waist and our hip. Now let's just check our circumferences and see. So now if we like the way our camp shirt fits, you know, like when I did the, this muslin here, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to add a little bit, forgetting how loose this shirt is. It already has eight inches of ease. Um, and it was just too much. So I know now, okay, I don't really want to, it still makes me nervous because, you know, I really don't want it to get hung up on my butt or my hips. You know, I don't want it to be uncomfortable to sit in. Um, and I, I really do kind of want a relaxed, casual vibe, but I don't want it to be so large or, um, balloony, you know, I want it to be kind of in that nice, happy medium. And you may have to do a muslin to figure that out. There's, you know, doing it perfectly the first time is a lot to ask if you've never, sewn this and you're cutting it out of your real fabric, right? I'm not going to, I'm going to do a muslin really quick before I cut this out in fabric today. Um, and I'll probably cut the muslin with you on camera. Maybe even sew it, maybe we can get on the form. So, cause we're kind of, we're getting close to even being done right now. So, all right. So now, um, I only wrote down my hip measurement because for me, my hip and my waist are, my hips not going to be smaller than my waist. So I can do that. So my hip, is my, my ruler is so messy I can't see things. So this would right here, if my front and my back are the same across, that would be my 
hip measurement right there. So to me, that tells me, let's just add a little bit more. I like the eight inches of ease I have here at my waist. Do I think I need eight inches at my hip? I don't know, it feels like I have eight inches at my hip, so maybe I was, wasn't being very honest about my hip measurement. My hip measurement is usually 42. Maybe that measurement is what I want. Oh, that might be what it is. Maybe that measurement I wrote down is what I want. Yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> okay. So I'm more in the, what is that? I'm more in the, this range right here. That's where my hip is. So that gives me, if I take off my seam allowance here, that gives me about an inch right here of ease. So that's four inches total, four inches total in circumference ease when this is a half of an inch above my measurement, right? So this is half my hip measurement or a quarter of my hip measurement, right? A quarter of my hip measurement here um, plus an inch, that's gonna give me four inches of ease. So if I wanted to do a little bit more, I'd probably, yeah, we'll, we'll do a little bit more. I'm gonna do three quarters of an inch more. That gives me three inches more. It makes a big impact, these little things. And look, it's not that much to have to blend in and we can blend into this side seam here like that. I know I don't want a bulbous <laughs> hip here. So I, if anything, I'm gonna go straight out, like at an angle or straight down. I won't come back in, of course, you know. Then you're going into the dirndl kind of vibe, right? All right, so now let's square across here. The same amount going down. Oh man, this ruler is really filthy. Now, if you were doing something more like an A-line, you're gonna be going out more. Um, just be careful adding too much. So the problem with a lot of A-lines is that um, they add the whole volume of the A-line to the side seam only, and it shows. So if you're standing there looking at the person, they you know look like a um, like a bell, right? It goes. It's the volume is all at the side seam. So if you're doing a, a line and you have a center front seam, I recommend splitting it and kind of distributing it. You'll get a you'll get more of a, a softer bell <laughs> shape, right? Kind of like a typical. I don't even know how to. I don't even know what that would be. But I think you know what I mean. You don't want to go extreme on the side seam lampshade yeah exactly but yeah you get you you want a lampshade you don't really want a triangle flat triangle right you're, you're wanting something that is more this shape and you see how this right here is up above the center front here's the side seam here's the center that's the other thing you have to get a right angle right here so if you do the A-line, make sure you're at a right angle. Maybe I could add a little bit of angle to mine. That wouldn't be so bad. And I can show you a little bit about the right angle. It's really important. If you don't do the right angle, if you went straight across like this, your side seams will be longer than your, your front and your back. Bell or lampshade instead of a triangle. Yeah, a flat triangle. I, I see this and I comment on it in Pattern Chatter occasionally. We have a monthly pattern review show and it's very clear sometimes where they added the fullness of the skirt. Sometimes you're limited in where you can add fullness. But the, the thing is, um, you, can, you can do a better job of it by distributing it or just not adding as much so it's not so obvious, you know. But definitely you want these right angles you don't want to straight across. It, your side seam will be too long. All right. So now let me check this 41. We can just do it right now. Well, I can't really see in the mirror, but. Okay. So that's about right. That's what I want. All right. So I'm going to square across for my hem. And you see this little angle we're going to do a right angle and what I do when I do this 
Did you see how my ruler is sort of bisecting the hem kind of in the middle of the length here, like right here? That's what I'm usually looking for. So say you had a really sharp angle like this, right? A sharp, sharp, sharp angle like that, right? It, it gets a little hard to meet this center thing because look, if I wanted a right angle to that ruler, that, look at how much higher this side is than over here, right? But that's sometimes what it takes, all right? So that's what I'm saying is I sort of, this is where usually my goal, I can usually get a really nice right angle when I use the middle of the pattern as my goal to taper to, to blend to. And so now I know that is my cut line right there. All right. Let's um, bring this in a little bit. That's pretty much it. So for the casing, now say you, if you do want a waist seam, um, you could hide it at the bottom of the blousing right here. So I'd put it right here, split this apart and add seam allowance to both pieces. I may have to do that since I'm considering doing this ruler print. This is too long of a piece to put on the bias. I'm thinking right now. I don't want my fabric to dictate what we're doing here, <laughs> but I may need to do that to be able to uh, get my pieces on the bias because uh, I need to be able to match the, the print. I literally searched for more of this fabric and I could only find a yard more So, because I'm so nervous about not, being a, not having enough to do this idea that I have. <laughs> so, all right. So let me, look, let me look at my notes here, make sure I got everything for this. Oh, I didn't do my neckline yet, so let's do that really quick. All right, so for my neckline here, um, let me zoom in a little bit. I wish this wasn't so cumbersome to do. All right, so the neckline, like I said, that I'm going for is this one on the top left, this one right here. So do you see there's no, um, there's no this right here, right? It just blends in smooth like that, right? Now that's gone. And if you didn't want that, you're gonna get this look right here, the slit in facing the far right dress, right? So this is what I'm doing here. And I need to decide where I want my collar to end. So, um, I mean, right now it's ending right here, right? And so I think that if I kept the exact same collar piece, let's see where it ends up. Cause I, I might like that. Let's, I'm gonna measure my neck here, four and a quarter and four and a quarter. Yeah, so that would be like right here. That's, that's good. I like that. I'm going to look at it. Let's look at my dress form. <laughs> no, actually, this one's backed off here. So you can see, see how high my collar is up here? So what I just drew on the paper would have been that, more like here. So it, it would look more like that. like that, right? I like this. I like this more um, tennis dress vibe. If the, drows, the dress is sleeveless. Mm, you don't have to add as much. Hi Jan, how's it going? Yeah, I like the, the, this version better too. So if I wanted this, you know, where is this at on me? You see how the collar, I'm always looking for a reference point. So, cause it's sometimes hard to, to know, right? You don't, you may not have a dress form either. So if I was wearing this or looking at it or looking at pictures of people, 
wearing the collar I want. I'm gonna look for a reference point. So right now I'm looking at, see how the collar lines up with the base of my neck here? So I sort of want it to end up here, right? So right now, this one here, <laughs> how does this go? See, it's ending here. So we're, we're saying, I want this to end more like right here. That makes sense? So just to give you guys something to look for, like if you're like, I want that. How do I get that? I don't own that. She's wearing it. Where, where is that at on her? Then that way you're dealing more with proportions rather than measurements. And I think that that proportions are a lot more helpful sometimes because it's probably the proportion of how it is on the person that's attractive to you. And you can kind of mimic that proportion on you. So, all right, so that's like over here, right? And actually I wanted to measure how far apart my slit is here. So right now that one is one and three eighths apart, which is, I kind of nailed that. That's right there. So that's good. So let's just leave this right here. We're gonna, we're gonna do this as my end point for my collar. And then my collar piece. <laughs> I didn't wanna rip it because it's sitting under a ruler. So here was my placket for the pullover version, right? I don't need that now. And here's my current collar and sleeve. I don't, I won't need to change the sleeve at all. But we'll change this collar a little bit. So we're just gonna grab the top collar because we're gonna draft a new under collar. Do I have enough paper here to do that? Probably. I have enough at the bottom though, so let's just cut this off. There we go. All right, so here's my collar. So, Here's, here's your collar, right? It's on the fold. Here's your shoulder notch, and this is your center back notch. And this is your center front right here. This right here is the outer perimeter. So if you're looking at this collar pattern piece, this is how we're looking at it, just like this. So here's the back of my garment, see? This would be how this looks, okay? So this is my point where I always like to remind you that when you cut this out, if you want, when you turn down your collar for the print to be right side up, you should cut it upside down like this, right? Because this is how it would look, just so you, I was trying to tell people this. It's like the one thing in fashion college they told us to do wrong. There's like two things and this is one of them. I can't remember what the other one is. It'll, it comes to me sometimes, but all right. So here's my, um, my collar. <clears throat> I always try and draft these on the full piece, not on the fold, because it's more accurate. So we'll take our collar. We want our shoulder notch. And really all we're gonna be changing is this distance here. We can leave this the same. We haven't changed our neckline at all. So um, let's measure this amount from the shoulder seam down to our new finishing point on the seam line, always measure on the seam line. So let's see, that would be about right here, right? That's the finished amount. That notch signifies where the finished collar is going to land because this notch is when the collar's already been sewn together. So the seam allowances are gone along this edge, right? So now we need to add the seam allowance to it. I like quarter inch. And now we're just gonna trim this parallel. So I'm trimming off, looks like an inch and a quarter, like that. See ya, Aisha. 
something like that. Now, if you lose all of your like point here, this little, see how it's going up? You can add that a little bit. You can go like this, just add it back like that. You can even carry this one over. So I'm gonna draw a, a mark on this line where that one hits. So I use my ruler and there it is right there. See? And then I would get roughly the same shape. You could also take your collar, move it over and trace it just like that. See? So there's lots of ways to mimic this. Um, if you don't mimic it at all, you're probably gonna be totally fine because remember we're interrupting the collar before it gets to that um, new point. Right? It used to go all the way to here and now it's going here. So just lopping it off right there, it, that's, that's what it'll look like. You know, it'd be like me going, oh, okay, this collar now ends here, <laughs> you know? So, all right, so then this is our new top collar. I'm gonna cut all this messy stuff off so I don't get confused later. And I always do this for my pieces on the fold so I don't make a mistake. I also never cut pattern pieces out with a rotary knife, but you know, this is like quick and dirty drafting. All right, so we have our shoulder notch and then we'll need a notch right here at the center back. All right, so this is our new pullover camp dress, collar. <laughs> it's, not, it's never simple with me <laughs> as far as titles go. All right, and then we'll do the under collar um, when, after we draft our back so we have that scrap paper to use. All right, so let's put our pockets on. Set that aside. Hi, Michelle. How are you? <laughs> We're still here doing our thing. Have you been? <laughs> All right, so we have that one measurement left of our outer shoulder high point, right? Oh, which we didn't mark on our uh, thing, did we? I thought someone was walking in here for a second there. <laughs> my bad, we didn't mark our, um, where's my pieces? Where's my originals? Oh, they fell off down here. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I forgot about this. So let's fold it down really quick like this. We've got our shoulder, right? We line this up on here. And then we're going to take that high point of shoulder, outer shoulder measurement down for where our pocket. Hi, Patty, right? How's it going? All right, let's see. Um, it was a, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what it is. I'm not telling you my numbers because I don't want to confuse you. I'm not gatekeeping. <laughs> I just don't want to confuse you because your numbers are different than mine. And I also don't want you to ever think, um, oh, um, that must mean mine's wrong, you know? So, all right, so we're kind of right about here. Oh, wait, 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 that's not right, I'm sorry. I didn't put my dart together. <laughs> that makes a difference. All right, let's just tape it. All right, and we got our dart. How do really? <laughs> I mean, I feel you on that. Michelle, I mean, I've sewn so long on my channel, other people's patterns, and I'm just sort of losing my mojo on that just because I really like drafting. I really believe in drafting, and I would, I would love to do more sew-throughs of garments, but I'm just pretty much reserving that for sponsored things now. I have too many other things I really want to do um, and help you guys with 
that I think are more product a productive use of my time. <laughs> so that's my plan. Things like this. All right, so that measurement was from here down. See, look, it dropped it way down because my dart wasn't pinned right here. All right, and now I'm going to untape this. Untape this. This is my pocket. I have it written down on here too. It's right about here. So it's right at my blousing of my waist there. That kind of surprises me. I feel like it should be a little lower. So we can always double check it before we add our pockets. So one thing you can do when we're, do, we're just doing inseam pockets and we're gonna add the casing at the very end on the outside. So we could, <clears throat> let's see, we could do this so that we don't have to sew the casing on a finished dress. With the center front seam though, that we could leave that open, put the casing on, and then do the center front seam. I may have to think about this, like a, a good order of operations. Um, but what you can do, I guess my point is that when you get this cut out, maybe your darts are sewn in and you have kind of the basic shape of the dress, you can put your shoulders together, Put it over your head, pin the armholes so you have the correct, it's hanging in the correct place and then find where you want your pockets to go. So that's always a really good backup plan. I never ever assume I know where the pockets are gonna go until the garment is actually on me. And with the blousing and everything coming into play, it may feel a little different and you may not know this. Like I am pretty consistent on where I want my pockets, but the garment to garment, it will vary on paper. So, so if we want this right here, I would really like it to, cause this, this is the same as this, right? Cause this is the blousing. So this is like a pleat. So it's right here. I think it'd go a little lower. Um, I don't really want the opening to butt up against this casing either. And that makes more sense. So, all right. So that's gonna be potentially where our pocket is. So I'll, I'm gonna put it like an inch down here below the casing as me as a possibility and then i'm going to do a five and a half inch opening proposed pocket so proposed pocket opening i do five and a half i think five is too small all right all right so let's finish this neck up here so See how I like this sort of curve I have going here with my my French curve here. Sort of blending it in. Something like that. Sort of the pseudo slit with a Johnny collar. I love Johnny collars. Um, I've been talking with someone in the guild because she's really into them too lately. And um, I think they're really cute. Okay, so this is where our collar is ending. So let's draft a facing for this. Maybe we can cut this. So we need a little more paper on the back. That's why I can't just cut this off quite yet. I know I need a little, my back shoulder is higher. We saw my back shoulder is higher. I'm just gonna need another piece for um, the facing. I'll do the collar really quick so that it's done then. And we could just cut this out. I'm trying to decide what to do right now. I'm just gonna cut another copy of my, my collar. Okay, you still need your shoulder notches. You need your center back notch. You need your center back seam, right? Okay. 
but for an under collar, and I know a lot of you don't like these, but um, they're really key to getting a nice collar so that your collar doesn't lift up, like it doesn't kind of fly away, um, and you don't have that fabric bunching underneath. You need to shave off a little bit. And so we're gonna shave off an eighth of an inch right here at center back, right here parallel to nothing at this point here. So let me show you. Let's blend it to nothing like that. All right, so see this, we're shaving that off there. And I also like to shave off a little here and I'll do the full eighth right here in the, in the middle. So right here. And then we're gonna do to nothing at the points here. So that's our new collar and we'll trim that off. And this will be our under collar. And then for my under collar, I usually do a quarter inch notch from the center back. So then you'll have a double notch along the back neck only on the under collar. So if you, if you are if you cut your collars out and you can't tell them apart you always know the double notch is the under collar usually double means back lower or under a johnny collar um if you google it it should come up if it doesn't i'll put a link in chat let me know it's kind of like a polo but it doesn't come together at the center front. The pointy 80s collar. No, no, it is not what Jan wrote. <laughs> it's not a disco collar. <laughs> okay. Pull over. Camp. Dress under collar. So if we lay this on here, line it up along the neck, see the top collar is bigger here and bigger here. It's hard to tell because of my fat Sharpie. <laughs> That's why I say <laughs> Sharpies are never very accurate. They're, the Sharpie can be almost an eighth of an inch thick. I want to let me post that. Oh, that link's too big. Um, just a second. Let me. Uh, I got to do a tiny URL. <laughs> Okay, here you go. There you go. That's the Johnny Collar lean. Okay, um, all right, let me get back to this. So, we have our collar. We need a facing on our center front and we need a casing. Um, I'm using a pocket from the pocket SBS right here. And I might just, if it's gonna be this close to my casing, I might just carry up this right here up to the waist here so that it gets caught in here. I love when the pockets are secured to the dress um, so that they don't flop to the back, right? It's kind of a more elegant solution for a uh, um, pocket, so I can show you how to do that. Let me get another piece of paper. We need one for a facing. 
Don't worry, the back is really easy to draft because we're just going to copy the front onto the back. Don't you dare roll away. All right. All right, so. See, I think that'll be big enough. Dang, you know what? I was um, working on my computer. I have my my uh, editing computer is here right now, <laughs> and I was working on it yesterday, and I did the dumbest thing. I had a green juice. You know, like a juice in a, in a plastic bottle with a cap, like a store-bought one. I picked it up to, and I shook it, thinking the cap was on there. Because I always screw the cap back on, and it kind of annoys me that I do that all the time. Because then I'm always like, oh, I have to take the cap, I'll take a drink. And then I put the cap back on. But it was up next to my computer, so usually everything is tight. I shook it, and it got all over my keyboard. And the keyboard works but the keys don't work. They're sticky. It's so bad. I have to get a new keyboard now, like ASAP. <laughs> and it, it's like, it's not an expensive keyboard. Like that's not the thing. It is fun that it's colorful. Like it changed, the keyboard changes color like all throughout the day. But um, uh, so annoyed that I did that. I'm usually so careful, but I'm such a klutz. All right, so I folded a piece of paper in half here. So if you put your, your dress on the fold, this is the kind of placket you're also gonna want. But if, you're, um, if you are using a pullover style camp shirt, you just use your placket. You know, you just made your dress longer, right? All right, so I'm gonna put my center here on the fold of this paper here. It doesn't matter that my paper doesn't um, go all the way to the end of my shoulders either because our facing doesn't need to be that wide. Now, I'm gonna be sewing this like a camp collar, which means there's no back neck facing. Um, mine also has a yoke. So you typically don't see a facing on a garment with a yoke. Not all camp shirts have yokes though. So a more traditional camp shirt won't have a yoke in the back, um, but it also still won't have a facing. If you want a facing, and you don't have a yoke, go for it. Just draft a facing because you don't have to, if you don't like sewing the, uh, the camp collar without it. But I, I do have a really great way to sew a camp collar um, and, and it works and it's, it's a couple extra steps but the, you never get that raw cut at the shoulder and it always works. So I'll do that this week too. All right, so let's weight this down and I'm going to trace this onto this under paper here like that and we want that little notch. It's not necessary, but it kind of underscores we're on the right path when we're sewing, right? All right, so here we go. We're gonna mimic this here and here is that. All right, and now I like my facings to be um, cut two and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna measure two and a half inches away from the the edge here. And when it gets down here, I'm gonna go two and a half inches down, just like this. And now you can decide if you're doing the Donnie, right? It has kind of a square facing like this, right? It looks like this, right? And then you sew it to the garment, I think. Um, I have the pattern, oh, wait. Do I have the pattern pieces here? Yeah, yeah, so it's a straight piece here right? That's the facing. And it's cut too because there's a seam. You can do that too. Like I would just stick with however your pullover already is working. You don't need to change all your pattern pieces. Um, and uh, I'm going to do mine on the fold here. I'm actually going to do it a little bit longer and I'm also going to curve it. Maybe give it a more organic shape like that. This is kind of a unique collar neckline setup. So right angle there at 
the bottom here and then just cut that up just like this. And then we have our facing. That's just a notcher, that's all it is. On these little tiny pieces, I always like cutting the full piece because I'm just terrible at cutting really long um, pieces that are like belts, <laughs> things like that. I just hate it. I'd much rather have the full piece just like that. So, and I will say like having this little V to the seam, it's not easy to get that little slit. So the probably the way you sew the Donnie, I don't know, but I'm assuming you... I'm assuming you sew the facing to the neckline on each front and then you sew your center seam. Is that how, is there any Donnie sewers here? Is that how you guys do that? Or is it that you sew your center front seam, attach your collar and then put the facing on? Do you do the center seam before or after the facing is on? I guess that's my question. So. Um, but this will be a really good opportunity to show some strategies on dealing with slits. So if your, your garment is on the fold here without a seam, I would do the same thing here, just like this. And notice, you know, see that it's a part right here, as opposed to this looking like, oh, let's do this right here. <laughs> right? Something like that. Oops, like that. Right, I've cut this little point off. Mine looks like this. Lots of ways to do these things. All right, so here's my facing. All right, last thing I'm gonna quickly draft with this is my pocket. I have a sleeve skill build, or I have a sleeve. I have a sleeve skill building session. A pocket skill building session, and um, I just pulled this right from there. If you're a guildie in the guild, like you pay to be a so-so guildie, you have this, don't buy it. <laughs> you have all the pockets. Ooh, I did a really bad job of tracing that, but we get the idea, right? Okay, put the grain line on there and the pocket opening, which is like five and a quarter. So it's close to what I put there. I put five and a half over there. So we'll adjust my notches to five and a quarter. All right, and then now what I'm gonna do is see if I can see it. I can see that red line. We're gonna line this up on the, over the notches that I put over here, right? And I'm also looking at like, does my side seam, will it work with the shape of this side seam and, and it'll be fine. And so now I can see the red line of my, um, where my blousing is, the excess there. And really the casing is probably gonna go like right about here, right? So we're just going to, I'm gonna, this is my goal. I'm really hoping to include this in the casing there, the, the stitching. I don't know if I can do that, we'll, we'll see. I'm gonna add a little bit. Really, I would just want to anchor the pocket in the stitching of the casing. Collar, then facing, then center. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you, thank you. I kind of figured because when you're doing um, a slit like that and it's on the fold, it's, it's a lot more accurate to do it that way, so. All right, so there's my pocket and we'll I'm fine with that. I don't really need that to be perfect because we're going to determine where this pocket it really is. But hopefully it'll be with this casing. Maybe not. Sometimes you just gotta leave some of these things up in the air until you get there because this is our first time making it. We're basically trying to make a dress without um, making three before we've perfected it, right? So <laughs> you gotta be kind to yourself and you gotta be willing to kind of experiment. All right, so here's our front. Let's clear the decks a little bit and um, make room for drafting our back. Get kind of a clean slate. The casing I have not drafted yet either. 
and it's, you see how there's a little bit of an angle right here? Now, if you don't have this angle, right, it's not perpendicular to this blousing that I've drafted in here. If you um, are straight up and down, you can do a straight long casing, that's fine. I'm gonna have to do mine in pieces, a front and a back because of this angle right here because I wouldn't be able to sew this on the dress if I used a perfect rectangle, if that makes sense. So don't make that mistake. If you have an angle right here, you're going to need a front and a back and a seam with your casing there so that it lays nice and flat exactly where you plan, plan it to be. All right, so let's just put that there. Let's move you here. How are you guys doing? Do you guys have any questions or what do you think? Is this too much work? Is it perfect enough work? <laughs> are you guys making camp dresses? Am I the only one making a dress? <laughs> All right, so here's my back. No, the facing's not cut on the fold on the Donnie, exactly. Yeah, and that's why I say you want to utilize as many of your pieces you already have of your camp shirt. We're only changing the lower portion. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay. So now this, this isn't a traditional camp. I added the yoke and the reason I like the yoke, um, <laughs> you're taking copious notes, okay. Yeah, and uh, we can, you, if you think of questions while I'm sewing this, you can ask me then too. But um, the reason mine has a yoke is that I really wanted that little gathered lower back. I really think that's cute. I like that look and it gives me some movement, right? It gives me a little bit of easy, cheap movement, right? So, oh good, I'm glad Catherine. <laughs> all right, so because I have this yoke, I actually don't need to change this piece at all. Like it's fine. It's um, really just this lower portion here. So I actually will have a little extra paper. So maybe I should cut this out. Let's cut this out really quick so that we have it a little easier to trace around. I think it would look really cute on you, Eliza. I sort of want to get my shape of my dart legs better. So let me just fold this really quick. along the side seam here. I'm really, I'm really picky about how I fold the dart. I really kind of force it there. All right, so now I can kind of go, all right. I feel like I could have used a little paper already in that. I'm going to. I had already cut a little bit and I shouldn't have. So let me fix that. Nice. All right, so now let me We're not drafting a pattern we would sell. So I just want you to know this, this is very, very casual pattern drafting, okay? <laughs> drafting with Sharpies, cutting with my rotary knife.
Oh, you know what I forgot? This is a, um, I don't want this to be, I want this to have a center seam. And it doesn't have a seam allowance right now. So I'm gonna add that real quick too. Lots of details. It's really interesting when I do these kinds of drafting streams, I always think, oh, this is, this is a really straightforward, simple thing to show how to do. And then when I start kind of like, let's prepare for all instances, consequences, right? <laughs> and uh, I realize how much, how many options there potentially can be. And I try and anticipate, well, what if someone wants this? What if someone wants that? What if someone wants that? What if they don't have this? What if they don't have that? And um, I try and cover all, all options. So then I sometimes forget something simple like this. I, this is what I want on mine. I want a center seam because I want to try and do the ruler fabric. And I'm gonna do a right angle right there with the seam allowance. That gives me a very clear indication where this seam ends and I don't have to have a notch. Because if I just sort of like, you just, you really can't just like blend it in. It, it gets too uh, vague. You really need like an end point for your seam when you're doing something like this slit here. I only have a half inch seam allowance. I wish it was more, but I don't feel like changing all the seam allowances on this garment. Okay, I'm going to tape this so that I don't lose it. There we go. All right, so now we have our seam allowance. And that doesn't change the facing because the facing lines up along the center seam here. Great. Oh, nice. Yeah, well, that's a good test lean. All right, so we have our back paper here. Um, if you have the, if you don't have a yoke, then you're gonna trace off your whole thing, right? Let me hide this guy for a little bit. So now I, I, I do have to decide, like when I'm looking at the back, um, is there a back view on this, on this thing? Please just let me grab this. Why? <laughs> this is one thing about this is that it's hard. No, none of these have a back view. Okay, let me um, let me pull up a back view of this. Because I, I was trying to decide what I want. Do I want... Um, do I want the gathers? Oh my gosh, I keep pressing the wrong folder. My computer's a little laggy because I'm streaming. I don't want to face up to the fact that it's time for a new computer. All right, so. Where's the other picture? Huh, all right, well, I'll show you this one. <clears throat> it's so laggy. Okay. All right, so you see how this is, if we didn't want to do the, um, if you didn't want to do a waist casing, you could pinch out darts, right? But do you see the back here along the, yoke and the gathers. Do I want something like that? Or do I want tucks? You know, like a tr more traditional button up shirt. I could put it in the center or I could put it on the shoulders, right? So I'm trying to decide. Um, I had a picture of it with the um, Back view. Okay, see, there's the, the down the lower picture. See, there's a picture of the back view with the casing. And I don't know how if I like the gathers up there. 
I admit the one with the darts looks a little bit like a nurse's uniform in my sketch. Sorry, my sketch isn't cute enough, but um, I think you get the idea. I think it could be, if you did double darts, I think that'd be really cute. Or release tucks, I think that'd be even cuter. So maybe I want those gathers across the back yoke. I don't know, what do you guys think? Do I want the, the um, back yoke tucks or do I want gathers like that? I'm trying to decide. Because I could also do something like, um, you know, like if it was, I could do a little outer, you know, tucks, right? Choop, choop, like that. I, the gathers are growing. I love the gathers. I think it looks really cute. I just wasn't sure if it was too much along the back there. Cause see, I like how, um, the, see this one doesn't have anything. And I like that. But maybe I want a little tuck right here. Maybe I want two tucks right here. Or do I want the gathers, you know? <laughs> it's hard to tell, huh? Maybe I'll stick with the gathers. I think that looks kind of cute. It's not too much, yeah. Yeah, I think with the fitted version, Julie, See, like what I was saying about the, um, you could do double tucks. So you could do something like, um, you could do, don't I have like a drawing here? Wait, I drew, I, I drew those by hand, didn't I? Okay, whatever. Uh, right, let's do a quick. So you could do double darts like this, and then they they be release tucks. You know, something like that. Maybe not even double. Really short little nurse's outfit. <laughs> Feel, no, I'm not doing a pole. <laughs> I'm not doing a pole. I don't want this to be too much longer. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll stick with the gathers. It works for me. That gives me a little more across the back um, is my only concern, so. All right, so if you ha don't have a yoke, you can just keep this all together. I'm just gonna trace off my lower part because I don't need the um, upper part. I don't need to trace off my, I can just use my yoke as is, right? I don't need to change anything, but I do need Okay, we did, we did transfer our, okay, perfect. We need our blousing still. All right, so let's just trace off this piece here. All right, see you, Eliza. I'm just gonna try and go around the sketch here. <laughs> no poles, Rachel, no poles. <laughs> Not with my precious um, ruler fabric either. <laughs> All right. We did all the work on the front now. We can just use the front to draft the back. And I'm talking in length and stuff like that. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't take your front and use it as the back. So if you've fit your camp shirt for any fitting issues you have, um, use your back and then just use the length positions of your casing and your pocket markings and your hem um, and the little extra ease we're gonna add, which I did not leave myself room, which I don't need to leave myself room for because I have all this extra. <clears throat> So yeah, all right, so let's make sure we have a nice straight line here. This is on the fold right now. Oh, see, this is one thing though. If I do my, oh, you know what? 
if I, I need to stop touching my face. I have too much ink on my hands. Um, if I do the ruler dress, if I do the ruler dress, the back of it, see right here, I want the rulers to go like this, right? Do you blouse more in the front? Because boobs, do you blouse more in the front? I don't, what do you mean blouse more in the front? Oh, because of, no, because it's not a, um, it's not a solution to fitting boobs. It's a solution for movement and, and style. So if you like a lot of blousing because you like the look of it, you add more. If you, and you need to be able to move around, right? Because we're, we're making the uh, casing because we're making it tight against our body. If that was like a loose dress, like you're doing the darts, you could skip the blousing. You only need the blousing because of the casing. Does that make sense? It's not for fitting. It's for movement. And because it looks cool. <laughs> All right, so you see how I have my, my, my diagonals. I'm kind of rethinking the um, gathers in the back. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Because I want, I'll, ha I'll need a center back seam. That also changes the um, yoke, <laughs> but the yoke could be its own thing. The yoke could be not on the bias. You know what I mean? So what if the yoke, it's just the lower part. Something like that, right? So if my ruler fabric, is that what I want? And then I'd probably put an outer tuck just for movement. You wouldn't see it. It's either that or I get rid of the yoke and I get rid of the gathers. I add a little uh, bit, maybe at the back neck, I could add a tuck at the back neck and I put a back seam in. I'm trying to keep this easy to fit as well. So I don't know. <laughs> I could eliminate the yoke, yeah. That's not hard to do. Yeah. Maybe we'll try that. I don't think I gave myself enough paper over here though. It's my only problem. All right, so we need So let's actually, um, we'll still use this as our center back. And then, yeah, I need a little bit of paper. Dag nab it. There's a piece cut out, I'm so happy. Okay, let's just trim off a bit here. We'll just tape it on there. All right, so let's put my yoke on here. Now, if you are, I, I'm biasing it towards the center only because I need more room on my paper. All right, <laughs> if you want to get rid of your yoke, what you do is line it up to your armhole here, right? So you want to get rid of your yoke and you need to get rid of whatever fullness they added to the lower back, you know, right here, like tucks or whatever, line it up here and then continue your center back seam down, right? And just ignore the old one. And then you've got a hole back. Now you may need to do some fitting with that because you've just taken out some ease that was built in for, with the tucks there, not that much. But it's close, it's, it's honestly really close. Sometimes these tucks are like one inch each on um, each side and that's two inches. 
but this is this is a little bit more. So this is probably double that. All right, so let's trace this on here. Oh, and I'm, I'm doing it down here because I need to reclaim some paper at this side. And I'm just gonna retrace the other piece. All right, so we're eliminating my yoke, my beloved yoke that I love. I'm not sad at all. Dang it, old removable tape. <clears throat> Oh my gosh, the tracing. Not a professional pattern. All right, so there we have our yoke traced on there. And we'll trace this back on here so that I can add the ease I need that I gave the front. All right, set these aside. Oh wait, let's, we, we did our, did we get our, um, did we do these? All right, we added three quarters of an inch down here at the hip, right? Something like that. We're going to use the front to draft the side seam. I'm really worried I'm gonna rotary knife through my shirt there. Okay, so I'm gonna lay this on here. You can kind of see it swings out a bit. Oops, I just ripped it my paper. The great thing about a center back seam is it gives you lots of opportunity for some shaping. So if you have um, not necessarily a hip tilt, maybe more an, uh, an official sway back, like because when you're taking out across the back in circumference, that's a little different than dealing with a sway back, which is when, or like a hip tilt, because you're taking out volume vertically. You're taking it out this way rather than this way. <clears throat> but having the center seam as an opportunity for shaping is really good, in my opinion. I, I love it. All right, so wait, here's the, here's my new one. Here we go. Okay, that makes more sense. All right. So we're gonna line this up. This one goes in a little bit more. So I'm just gonna split the difference a little bit. I want the same shape. It looks like I brought in my, my waist seam here. It seems kind of familiar actually. I'm gonna line up my hem here on top of the other hem there. I'm lining up my underarm here. kind of looking at it. Remember I added the blousing. Just tracing the whole thing there. I need a little piece of paper. I'm missing a little bit over here. All right, so I've traced my hem there. 
It includes my bad drawing. Thank, great, right? <laughs> uh, we don't do the center because we're going to leave the center back where it's at. So here's that extra fullness I added at the hip line here, the three quarters of an inch. Um, this is my new line right here. Sorry, I didn't do a different color, did I? Let me get my ruler. We'll make sure we have a right angle there at the hem because I sort of just sketched it in. All right. <clears throat> your grain line is always going to be parallel to your center front or your center back. You're looking for that. All right. And then let me draw on where this casing will be. And this might be something that you might want to play with the uh, pl placing but hopefully it's gonna be something that's level across your body, right? It won't seem like it sometimes, but. All right, there's our, I'm using the blousing as the guide for the casing, but um, that's just the blousing. So we're gonna put the casing kind of smack dab on the center of it. Oops, I did not do a right angle there. What was I doing? I was connecting these two. We're going to use the waist here as our guide. I'm just looking at a right angle to center back, connecting the lines at the waist. And this is the blousing that I'm just drawing in here and using as a uh, kind of a casing guide. We're going to center the casing over this bottom line of the, the blousing. So this is the blousing that I added. All right, and then, um, wait, that is right, right? I'm just making sure it's not the pocket. Yep. All right. All right, so now I have my back. I could add a little like tuck right here at the collar seam. I'm not gonna do that. Um, and then you can put this on the fold here or you could make this a seam at your center back. I'm making mine a seam since I wanna do the bias cut with the rulers. But this is also, if you have this on the seam, like I said, you can do, you have your opportunity to make it shaped so if this was the, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's the worst drawing ever, right? Here's your back, <laughs> right? You could make it taper into the waist and come out for the hip. You can even give it a little more flair for the bottom of the skirt, you know, that kind of thing. It's called a molded back. It gives you lots of good opportunity. All right, so let's trim off all this distracting stuff here. I need to still add my seam allowance for the center back and the casing. Those are the only two things I think I have left. We're just using our sleeve collars. If you didn't change your collar like I did, you can use all the same from your pattern. Let's add center seam allowance. I think it's going to be either, you know, maybe I'll do flat felled. Since I don't quite have an, I mean, I could do French seams with this, you know, you can do it with a lot less, um, but it's quilting cotton. So, you know, 
Maybe a flat filled seam would be a good idea. It would be a little less bulky and sit closer to the body. I like that idea. All right, let's draft the casing. I think that's it. I'm gonna cut and sew a muslin as well. Where's Ray? I don't know, oh, she's probably watching. Oh, was that in response to something, Jan? Did someone ask a question? All right, um, all right, let me get a piece of paper. I really underestimated my paper usage today. Oh boy, that sort of went south. Okay. So I'm thinking where I have this blousing. I would like to center my casing over the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. I, but I do also appreciate that this isn't a super polished tutorial. Like I didn't technically practice to do this. I practiced a little bit as far as like, I made a bunch of sketches. I got out a bunch of patterns. I sort of got mine out and sewed a muslin. But if I were selling a tutorial to you, it would be so much better. <laughs> you know, like I would I'd be like, here's a PDF, here's the steps. We're gonna first do this. We're gonna first do that. You know, you'd have a very clear goal. This is very open. Like, I don't know what pattern you're using. I don't know if you've sewn your pattern. I don't know if it's already as a pullover. I don't know if you're doing a pullover or a button up. So I'm trying to give you a lot of options and trying to think of those along the way while doing my own. <laughs> so I understand it's not for everybody, but <laughs> there's Ray. <laughs> oh, that's good, Rachel. I think for the, some, you either like that or you don't like that. And I get it. For me, it would have to be short, sweet, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna center my uh, casing over the bottom of the blousing, all right? Which means that my pocket is probably going into the casing a little further than I want, but I'm gonna sort of suss out where I want that pocket and my casing. Maybe we're gonna move the casing up. And so when you draft this casing, I would leave a little extra on the ends so you can kind of shift it up and down on the garment. Am I thinking out loud? See that? Am I okay? Well, good. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Michelle. Hang in there. I hope your dad's hanging in there. All right, so let's um, use some red here. So, all right, now we need to think about what are we gonna use as a belt in our casing? Now, and I also wanted to give you a couple of ideas for if you're, if you're super opposed to a belt and casing. Hi, Mary. Oh, good, I'm really glad to hear that, you guys. <laughs> good, I'm glad. All right, so um, if you don't want a drawstring in a casing, I get it. I used to hate those. Now I'm really into them. I made a couple dresses last year or the year before and I love wearing them. I, I don't know what it is. I just love the flexibility of making it larger and smaller whenever. Um, but if you want something a little more tailored, you might want to do the darts. Don't use, do the blousing, do the darts. And then you might want to pin that on yourself. You might need a helper as well, or you know, set up your camera, record yourself kind of holding the fabric back there, get two parallel lines, you know, something like that. And you can always baste in your darts, check them out and then sew them. That's what I would do in that case. Um, but you could also maybe do like an elastic panel back here. You could also, um, you know, maybe, you know, you know how like the Sylvan jacket has those little um, square patches for the button, for the cuff to go to? You could do something like that 
like a little patch with a little belt coming out, right? And you could tie the belt. I say do the patches because you don't have a seam to put your um, casing to, your, um, your draw cord. Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking about so many things right now, sorry. <laughs> okay, so you don't wanna just blindly sew a drawstring to the back of your dress, unless you put it in as like a tuck. You know, you could always put in, um, you know, say, like I did on the Sylvan as well, right? You could put your drawstring, sew a little tuck, have the drawstring coming out of the tuck right? Leave this, you know, have an end and you could tie those together. You could do that. Uh, what else could you do? An elastic piece of elastic that clips to your dress and clips it together. Um, you could do shearing, which is elastic in your bobbin in the small of your back. Um, if you wanted to do an elastic in the back, you're going to probably want like a, a casing that sits at the small of the back. The problem with the casing is that you have to secure your elastic to something, right? So if you, <clears throat> you can't just stick the elastic in the casing and you can't just have it poking out the ends of your casing. So you have to kind of be strategic about that. So um, there's a lot of options you could do to cinch the back and the front. You could do a lot of these things in the front as well. You could do just side ties side ties like the sylvan does the tabs right exactly so there's a lot of options for cinching waist i think we know a lot that there's a lot of options there so the trillium like the trillium is the trillium i don't which one's the trillium that sounds familiar there's no shortage of ways to cinch your waist <laughs> that's like one of the things we've been trying to deal with for thousands of years right so um for the casing, I'm probably in the long run, I'm probably going to put a seam right here, add seam allowance to both edges because I'm cutting this on the bias and I'm pattern matching, right? I need smaller pieces. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to go crazy. Um, and I've even thought about making my ruler go like this. So this is my waist. That's my center front, you know? <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> There's a lot of options with the ruler. I've actually played around with it in Procreate. <laughs> so yeah. All right, so the casing I'm gonna do, you need to know what's gonna go in your casing. Are you gonna make a tie? Are you going to use a ribbon? How wide is what you're going to use to tie? I would suggest something kind of narrow so that it slides really easily and you don't have to engineer space for a belt. Because if you're doing a, something wider like a belt, you really need to nail the position of where that is gonna sit on your body because something narrower has a little more flexibility. It can kind of, you know, like other small things can fit into more places. So I'm probably gonna do something like this, like a little, nothing wider than this half inch, maybe three eighths inch wide um, draw cord that I'm going to make. So, so if I'm going to do a three eighths inch, you know, what could I, what could I, what kind of size casing could I fit here? Right. One inch could work, but you really need to make sure you're going to have enough, you know, space. So this is an, this is the inch right here. This is the inch line. So that, that could work. If it's a little wider, it might scrunch up a little easier when you go to tie it, but it also will look a little sloppier. So you're kind of looking for that balance there. You also want something that's gonna slide in there really easily. So make sure that the fabric you're using is gonna slide in there, right? Because some things, like if you used a velvet ribbon, you might have trouble getting it to slide in there. I've done that before. <laughs> so. I think that um, one inch will be fine for me because I want a drawstring that's an eighth of an inch smaller than this. So a tiny bit smaller, it'll be more like that, right? One inch will be good. So let's put it on either side of my blousing here. 
And I'm going to turn under the edge and top stitch it down. Very simple. So for the back here, I'm gonna probably go over the seam. We could do one continuous piece here. We could even do it on the fold, even though I really don't like long skinny pieces. We will cut it on the fold. Now on the front, we need space for our belt to tie together. And I'll talk about if you plan on doing this kind of belt, but you are doing a button front, kind of like the Rita, the Rita shirt dress we were talking about earlier. Who, who made the Rita? Uh, is that paper cut? That's paper cut, right? No. <laughs> the Rita, the Rita shirt dress by, well, shoot, everything sounds possible. All right. No, named, ah, thank you, Malin. It's named clothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not Gertie. I haven't made any of Gert Gertie's patterns. Aren't they all behind her Patreon paywall anyway? Um, all right, so I, I could basically just draft a, 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 you know, one and a half inch wide piece and then put the angle on there. Malin knows. Because this is not, this is not straight. <laughs> this thing does not go straight. It's heavily dependent upon me <laughs> making it go straight. So really all we needed was this little angle here. And we want to do a right angle to our center back here. Yeah, that's definitely not straight. <laughs> and then the one inch. Here's my side seam. And then I'm only gonna give myself a quarter of an inch to turn under. Just like that. Now, when you cut this out, like I said, leave a little extra here. That way you can kind of slide it up and down if you want, you know, just in case you want to shift it around a little bit. Okay, here's our center back casing. Since I have a seam, it, it'll be uh, helpful to have a notch here. If you don't have a seam there, you might find this notch isn't that really that helpful because um, you won't know where the center is. See ya, Michelle. Nice seeing you. Thanks for stopping by. Center back casing. All right, and let's do our center front casing, which is not on the fold. <laughs> Are really? I didn't think you were questioning me. I hadn't seen it, sorry, Aunt Nancy. <laughs> you guys always know better than me. I would never ever <laughs> doubt you guys. <laughs> um, all right, so let's put this, let's draw it in here. I'm just going to put the full amount. So three quarters of an inch above and below. So that gives me my half inch for the casing and the quarter inch for the seam allowance. And I'm not even anywhere near on the paper here. Let's so the, let's see, I'm what now what I'm thinking about is what are my unknowns still? Um, I'm thinking about my pocket and how it's going to integrate with my casing. Is my casing height in the right place on me and is my pocket in the right place on me? Um, and that's pretty much the only true unknowns besides do we know how well this is gonna fit and hang on us, you know, just because, you know, it's a whole new pattern. So um, there's that. All right, so that we have our 
straight lines. I can just connect those. Okay, so now if you're doing a button front and you still want the casing, you need to back this casing off of your button placket a little bit. So if you're, this is the center line, right? So your buttons would go on here, but maybe your, you know, your extension is longer. Yeah, that's fine, right? This is what we're thinking about. Here's your button front. You want this casing to probably end, I would say, I'm gonna say at least three quarters of an inch away, like here, maybe even an inch, like that there, right? So because this is what happens is this is this is your casing. Well, this is you're looking at the blousing thing visually on the screen right now. We'll just pretend like that's the casing, okay? Your draw cord comes out of this hole here and needs to tie across the front and it's going to scrunch together your placket and your dress. So you just need to give it a little bit of space to be able to do all of that right there. And you also need to plan your buttons and buttonholes so that they're um, integrating well with your casing. So yeah, I can relate to the button size. Yeah. So if you know your button size, I would definitely think about that too. All right. What's well, been a long time? Wait, you should, I was gonna, like ask her when was the last time she had Chinese food? <laughs> okay. All right, so I drew my um, line above and below the bottom of my blousing, right? Now I'm just gonna connect it. This is a quick and dirty way to do this. All right, so I'm gonna leave a little extra here at the side seam, right? But here at the waist, here's my center seam, right? Now I don't have a button Placket that I'm worried about, but I still need room for this draw cord to draw. So um, I'll probably do something about the same. I would probably do your button plaque a little more. So let's say we'll do, you can even do it way, way far apart, by the way. You don't have to, you could put your end of your casing like way over here. That's fine. You just see more of the draw cord. That's fine, right? So it just depends. So Let's draw it in here. So right now, this is my center of my garment right here. This is the cut line of the, we don't need that because we need to back this off. So I'm gonna back it off an inch, right? So this is where I want it to end, but then we need a hem on this opening here. So I'm gonna give myself three quarters of an inch hem. So this is my hem. This right here is the finished opening of the casing, right? That says hem, by the way. <laughs> um, and then this right here, center front. Okay. This is our casing. So basically it looks like this. Right? Okay. So that's what we just drafted. So this hem right here, put a star, is this right here. So you match the stars there and they circle them in red. Right? Oh, it's raining out there. Okay. <laughs> so make sure you, if anyone's taking screenshots, they're taking their screenshots. Just to give you context, because I know like all these lines, you're like, oh my gosh, Jeremy, that's so many parallel lines. And I, and I know, and it, I'm really showing you kind of advanced ways to do this. Like I know you guys get better tutorials from really good pattern drafters out there and they're very literal. They're like, all right, do this, now do this, now do this. And I, I'm really just showing you how I would do this if I was just drafting it on my own. I'd be like, okay, okay, I know I want it there. I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna go back. I wouldn't even do this many steps. I would actually just know I want it there. 
<laughs> including the seam allowance. Um, but if you're new to drafting, it's really good to take off all the seam allowance and then add it. If you're, if you're new to drafting really big things or really small things, it doesn't matter. If you are nervous and you get lost kind of in the math sometimes, uh, take off all the seam allowances of your pattern pieces, draft your whole creation, add your seam allowances at the end. I promise you I will have not, you, that, that will save a year off your life because trust me, I understand like how, um, how much it can be to juggle all of that. So, all right, so we're gonna cut that off. And I'm leaving a little excess here. So I can slide my casing up and down on the garment, getting kind of where I want it to be. All right. So here's my casing. And see how they're at an angle right now? Like when they sew together. If yours is at a really severe angle, you might want to um, shape it right here. That looks fine to me. I'm okay with that. You can see how it goes at an angle, right? So, I'm <laughs> good. So, um, if yours is at a much sharper angle, it could be, I don't think it'll be this sharp, right? And you're like, um, stare me. When I sew this on my dress, I get this like point here. Um, you can draft this to be kind of a curve and kind of and transition one to the other. That's usually how I would do this, uh, usually because casings are kind of in an area where you need to give a little bit more contour. But our dress is pretty straight. It's a relaxed camp dress, so we don't have to worry about it too much. All right. I think we're good to cut muslin now. Um, except that I, I'm going to cut mine apart where I want the, um, so this is a good point to say, if you have a waist seam here, you can build your casing into the waist seam. I love that idea. <laughs> Cause then what you can do is say your waist seam is right here. You can put your casing on your bodice up here, turn under the top edge, right? You turn under your top edge. There's so many ways to do things. I love pattern drafting, all right? So, so we'll pretend like this uh, is um, cut apart, right? Just giving you an idea, right? And we, we have this, um, let me get this out of the way so you don't see it and it doesn't distract you. All right, so we'll say we made a bodice, right? And you just add seam allowance here, right? Then you could attach your casing here, right? And then you sew it in a seam. So now I will say I am a little bit of a drafting kind of snob when it comes to the way things look. <laughs> I would still like a top stitch here and a top stitch here so that they look the same top and bottom but it's not wrong and no one's gonna notice it because it's gonna be scrunched up with a draw cord. So yeah, exactly. It's, it's an easy way to place it and I love that idea because when we get to putting this long straight piece on our dress, it gets really dicey. It's hard to get it straight across because it's, you can put notches here at the side seam, but you won't have those anymore um, when you go to sew this casing. Because remember, you can't sew this to the um, front and the back and then sew the side seam because you'll close your casing off and they won't connect. This has to be a continuous piece, right? So you're doing this. You're sewing your casing together, right? And then attaching it to your garment. Your side seams have to be sewn before you do this. So. That's just something you can, but that's why I say leave your center front open, do the casing. That's the best way. So we might have to deal with a lot of dress when we get to the collar area because we wanted to put the casing on first. Ugh, I'm so thirsty. Which um, Love Notions jumpsuit is that, Christina? 
the Sunday romper. Is that what it's called? Or is that not the jumpsuit? I actually don't know. <laughs> okay. All right, so I centered this here, right? So technically, I center my casing over that like that. So technically I could put my waist seam like there and still center my casing over it, which I think I will do to hide it. Sunday, yeah, okay. I think I got that at a $5 sale, but I haven't made it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna cut mine apart so that it's two and then add a waist seam. And then I'm just looking for scrap. I'll probably, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but I think I might sew my muslin off camera just because I'm hungry. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> but I will show it to you tomorrow and tell you exactly what I did if I needed to do anything to it to adjust it. If is that fair? I know Julie will say no, but she's almost asleep anyway. One, one little cheaty thing I, I sometimes do is I will build these onto each other like this. <laughs> like that. It's less cutting. <laughs> You're not? Mm-hmm. I know if you're not teasing Ray, you're sleepy. <laughs> if you're not picking on Ray, right Ray? Always secure your paper on the back. I know there's people that are like, eh, it'll be fine this time, Sarami. One day it won't be. Okay. All right, so this is my front and my front bodice. I have my casings. We have I like the shape of these pieces better now. We have our facing collar. I'm using my existing sleeve. There's my pocket. And now we just need It's very confusing that I did the the casing in red on the back um, and the blousing in red on the front. Sorry about that. Whoops, oh my goodness. Another reason you don't use a rotary knife when you're doing patterns. They're, they're not that accurate for that. You don't have as much control. All right. <laughs> All right, Ray. Just remember you asked for it. When I have to tear you guys apart in the back seat of the car, you know. <laughs> I can't believe it's raining again here. I'm, I'm ready for it, but <clears throat> still, like I'm glad, but sheesh. Okay, that's, this, this optical illusion is even too much for me.
You don't have to line them up. I'm just being really um, cheaty with the cutting. <laughs> How many rivers? Uh, you mean creeks? I have three right now on our property. Well, we one sort of almost dried up yesterday and the day before, but then um, it's back now, I'm sure. Okay, the turkeys have been around a lot lately. I love them, I love the turkeys. All right, now we have our back and our upper back. I haven't labeled them all yet. But one way I can do that is just by putting a double notch. So a notch on either side of the center. I usually do a quarter inch, like just like I was saying earlier, this is not a half inch right here. I can tell. I'm wondering if that's not a half inch right there either. I'll have to double check that. All right, so we'll put a quarter inch here, quarter inch here, quarter inch from the center. That's why I'm saying that. And it'll be a double notch once the center back is sewn together. And then I know that that's the back. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm really excited if this works out with my um, ruler fabric. Let's just take a gander at it because I have the piece here. It's a much bigger piece than what I was showing you. I've even sewn a, look at this. I even have a whole pattern drafted for it. I have a muslin sitting here. I have all the things I'm supposed to do next on the muslin, but no, here's the pattern. I am sacrificing <laughs> all that work to make it. And I hope I have enough fabric, but isn't it glorious? <laughs> Centimeters and inches. No, I'm too hungry. <laughs> it's almost two o'clock. <laughs> too hungry. I need to eat and then I will cut it in muslin and sew it up. If you want, I can sew the muslin tomorrow, but that means we won't be able to sew dress tomorrow. And I, I don't I don't think I should leave the sewing of this dress all to one stream. That's a, a very long stream. I think part one and part two is better, but I will sew the muslin and I will show you it tomorrow. I'll even try it on and show it to you and in a picture. And I'll tell you if I had to do any pattern adjustments and what they were. So I won't leave anything out or hide anything. I don't ever, there's no point in hiding in things to me. <laughs> I'll just show you all of it. It's just the process. If I hid part of the process, it wouldn't be, accurately portraying what it takes. And I think that's really important because um, I think the one thing I see in home sewing way too much is people expecting perfection on their very first one. And I think that's just unrealistic. So um, you, you, the more patterns you draft and the more library of patterns you have, the closer to perfect you're gonna get drafting something new using those things you've already drafted because then you start kind of triangulating like what you like and what you don't like and what you need to do. So, right, Mullen? <laughs> That's so true. I can just look down. I'm already wondering though if, yeah, it has. See, this is the other thing. This is a one way. I hope I have enough. <laughs> Cause what if I have to like, what if I have to do this? Well, I can't do that. Cause then the, yeah, it's one way Boy. Me too, right Nancy, me too. Everyone know how big your bum is? I don't care, Julie, let them. If they're looking, then maybe they're, you know, they approve, I don't care. <laughs> they're gonna have to get really close to see what number that is. 
It goes up to 43 and a half. Only on the diagonal, exactly. This, this is, a, if, you, if you're interested in this fabric, this is the, let's see, this is the information. Um, can you see? Is that the whole thing? Yeah, this is the whole, whole thing. Sewing mood by a hoodie crescent. I can't see the, I'm trying to look to see what you can see. Okay, here we go. It's almost four years old. Good luck. <laughs> I bought everything hearts had. <laughs> so I might have to use the conference table to cut it out. I hope I can get all this done by tomorrow. I got to go. Bye. <laughs> all right. I'll see you guys tomorrow for sewing part one, unless something goes horribly long, wrong with my muslin. So thanks for coming and um, happy drafting. Hopefully you can get caught up and we can sew together. <laughs> I hate those zero shorts of people just whipping things up there. Oh, I know. I think about doing those and I think I would have to spend, you have to spend so long creating those videos. I'm like, no, I would much rather create things that live forever on YouTube or things you guys are interested in or just live stream or just sew on my own, you know? So I wish I did more of that. My hat is off to them, but no, it takes a lot, a lot of time. So, all right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.